Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. Okay, okay. Um, so I filmed this one and then I stopped filming it and the camera crashed and the video file corrupted. So now I'm having to film it again. <laughs> um, so I'm probably not going to talk as enthusiastically or for as long or get as sidetracked as I did um, with the original one. Um, we'll see. It is, all I know right now is that was very annoying and I wish that hadn't happened because it's actually a very good vlog. <laughs> Okay, so first things first, my medium sized magnet has arrived. So those of you who watched my blog last week know that I own a couple of large binders that I lost a little bit of weight um, and that I wanted to basically see if a medium binder would be more appropriate um, because I was firm with the medium binder size, buying safely everybody. Um, the answer to that is yes, I get a much nicer shape with the medium binder. Um, so with the large binders, I get this kind of, it's A, it's really difficult to position my breasts in a way which doesn't give me like an odd shape, either like bunching it up or, yeah, it, it, it just, yeah, it gives you like this kind of very odd side shape. Um, which has made it made me a little bit more self-conscious when I want to wear like a tighter top or whatever. With my binder, I, I find the large binders are really good if I'm just wearing like a baggier top. Uh, they just the just weirdness in the shape, not so good with tighter top. So I wanted to try a medium binder since I was firm with the medium size. Um see if it's made a difference. And I said, yes, it's made a huge difference. There is no weird bunching. Um, everything, if you look, that is so much easier to get everything positioned in a way where it looks even. Because, um, like most owners of the breasts, my breasts are not uniform in size, and that is very, very noticeable with the large binder. Not so noticeable with the medium binder. So I am very, very happy with my medium binder. Um, Staying on the medium binder for a moment, I don't know how well you can tell this, but the binder itself is in the um, colours of the new, more inclusive Pride flag. Um, it is from, let's just say the one for a GC2B. Um, all of my binders are from GC2B. Uh, one of them is from the, uh, their, their American site because the UK site basically has nothing available and it's had nothing really available for a while. Um, but my other two binders are from uh, literally partially a case of like these are the only ones that were available. <laughs> like in any sizes whatsoever. Um, I, I think because of the world situation at the moment, um, your international site is struggling a little bit with uh, supply and with the stock. Um, having said that, this was the one that I wanted anyway, so it wasn't such a big deal, but it was the only one that was available. Um, but at the same time, it would have been nice to have had a little bit more of a choice. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, even with more of a choice, I'm not practically certain I would have gone for this one anyway. Um, I, you know, I want to, to show my support for the entire LGBTQ plus community um, because everybody in the community is valid. Um, and I'm a big believer in supporting the minorities within minorities. Um, if you don't know what I mean by that, it's basically um, a minority group within the minority community, so that could be um, somebody who is neurodivergent um, and is a person of colour, so that makes them a minority within the minority community, depending on where in the world they live, or it might be a, a person of colour within the LGBTQ plus community, because again, that potentially means they are a minority within, within a minority. And I don't think enough 
attention or light is uh, shined on minorities within minority communities. Um, I think the the voice of the sort of um, quite often the voice it the, the voices that are the loudest are the able-bodied, um, fair-skinned um, neurotypicals. <laughs> When in reality, most of these like communities have so much you know more going on within them. As I said, there are minority communities within minority communities, and we need to recognise that more. We need to do more to make sure that they are taken just as seriously as everybody else, because equality is not equality until everybody has the same rights. And and when you say everybody, it has to mean everybody, whether they are disabled, whether they are neurodivergent, whether they are black or a person of colour, uh, no matter what their gender identity, their sexual orientation, you know, their country of origin, their religious beliefs. I'm probably missing some other things here that I should add, um, but I can't think of, of everything right now, but like all of that, all of that deserves equality. There shouldn't be any, you know, there shouldn't be any barriers, there shouldn't be any roadblocks to anybody to gain equality, for true equality to exist. It means everybody gets the same rights, and it's something that I'm passionate about, it's something that I, I believe in, um, and it's something that I try to show in my writing, but I know I don't necessarily understand these minority communities, um, so I don't necessarily you know, know 100% what issues I should be highlighting. Obviously, you know, I, I do try my best and uh, it is, as I said, something I'm very passionate about. I, I, am, I am a very strong believer that equality for all means equality for all. So I want there to be more emphasis and more voice and more notice put on minority communities within minority communities. And I think that is something that people, more people need to recognise is an actual thing and take seriously and not just listen to the majority of voices that they can hear. They, they need to be listening to the ones that are quite often are re repressed a lot more um, because they're not taken as seriously or they're not noticed or um, they, you know, whatever else. I, yeah, I hope what I'm saying makes sense. I apologise if it doesn't, um, but yeah, maybe it makes sense. Um, so, with that said, <laughs> the other thing that I want to talk about, which is very much connected both to my rainbow binder, uh, the fact that I'm wearing a binder, and, um, you know, pride stuff just in general. Um, so, a few days before filming, this one was the American Pride, and I went. I was actually at a Pride event. Scarily, more scarily, is I was at a Pride event on my own and realizing exactly why I, as an introvert, don't like going to things on my own. Um, it's because I tend to feel quite awkward in. I mean, I'm not the kind of person with the sort of confidence to approach anybody else. Um, and talk to people and try to find you know somebody that I can hang out with at a group event like that I do just yeah tend to be very awkward and very um yeah um but you know ignoring <laughs> ignoring that um I was very determined to go to some pride this year um I I've kind of been wanting to go for a couple of years um in 2019 I couldn't because, partly because I wasn't officially out um, as demi-pan or as non-binary at that point, um, and partly because I was working that particular weekend, both days, so it would be a bad kind of going away. <laughs> then obviously last year, pandemic, no Pride events, uh, or no sort of public Pride videos out in the community, Pride events were happening. Um, so I obviously couldn't go last year, much to my disappointment, because at that point I sort of started coming out as being Demi Pan, and as I've mentioned in previous vlogs, I, you know, yeah, it, 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 last year did not go the way I thought it would go um, at all, so 
for a lot of different reasons because of the pandemic. But, you know, in hindsight, not necessarily the worst thing in the world. Um, I think last year there were a lot of salvageable good points about the things that I went through and experienced last year. So I'm not going to say, yeah, last year is a complete write-off. No, last year allowed for a certain level of personal growth. And, you know, there is a reason why I'm now out as uh, by gender and non-binary. So, um, yeah, there were some benefits to things not going where I thought they would last year. Um, but I was, as I said, very determined this year. Cried. Had the set allele. Perfect. I hadn't booked it off. I just had it off. So there was no reason for me not to go. Um, it was raining. It was wet and miserable. So a wet, miserable Saturday when I was going to an event with lots of people on my own was very, <laughs> very intimidating. And it was one of those kind of things where if it had been a nice sunny day, because I, I do know um, a lot of people in the LGBTQ plus community through work that might have been at the event. Um, so if it had been a nice sunny day, I might have held out a little bit longer. Um, and waited a little bit longer uh, for somebody that I know to, to show up. I mean, I did bump into a couple of people from work, but they weren't ones that I knew particularly well. Um, I might have held out a little bit longer to see if anybody else I knew showed up and then, you know, enjoyed the event a little bit more. As it was, I definitely enjoyed the event. I took part in them in March. I was as noisy as I could be for the part, uh, for, for, for doing my part. And, you know, I get that pride isn't just about being proud of who you are, it's also, you know, a, a protest and, you know, a demand for recognition and, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm very passionate when it comes to the idea of making sure that equality is equality for all. Um, so, yeah, it, it was, yeah, it was good for what I was able to get out of it. Um, I would love to have I would have loved to have gone with somebody. I think it was one of those things where for me, you know, if, if I'd had the opportunity to bump into somebody that I knew whilst I was there, that would have been great. Um, if I'd gone with somebody, it would have been great. Um, the one friend that I had wanted to go with. So I only, I only checked the dates of my pride like two or three days before. And by that point, I already knew this particular friend was otherwise occupied for something that's happening this weekend. They were in rehearsals for something that's happening this weekend. Um, something that I'm going to get to see them do on one of the few days that they are going to be doing it um, this weekend. So I'm, I'm quite looking forward to that as well. But I already knew that they were already engaged in other activities and um, I wasn't necessarily going to, you know, I, I couldn't invite them along to go along with me. Um, uh, and then all my other sort of local friends um, who I could have asked, I knew probably wouldn't want to go for one reason or another. Um, sometimes because you know, maybe like one of them I knew probably would have been working or had a strong chance of working. Um, the other uh, the other probably just wouldn't get the event. <laughs> And I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, this particular friend has come a long way in their views since we were teenagers. Um, they are, they, they've reached a point where they are a lot more minded, a lot more understanding. Um, and, you know, they, they've had the experiences and they, they've done the things that they need to do to kind of reach a place where you know, their mindset now is completely different to what it was when we were teenagers and they are, you know, an incredibly understanding, as I said, open-minded and compassionate person. But I still don't think they would necessarily get pride. <laughs> like, even going as an ally, I, I don't necessarily think they would, they would get it. I think they would feel like they were out of place there um, and that, you know, I mean, I, I personally understand the importance of having allies at Pride alongside the LGBTQ plus members um, because, you know, it, 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 having the support of people who don't necessarily understand your 
point of view completely is very important. Um, having you know the support of your, your friends and your family is very important. So I completely understand, you know, having allies at Pride is important um, because it shows that there are more people who care about these issues, there are more people who are willing to stand up and fight for these issues. That doesn't necessarily mean that this particular friend would understand that and they would probably feel like, you know, they were usurping, um, but, you know, and they, they were there. And although they do, you know, support the LGBTQ plus community, they would feel like, you know, like almost need like an imposter system syndrome kind of situation, almost like, you know, they're there, but they shouldn't be there, they don't have a right to be there, they don't have, you know, the right to sort of even though, as I said, allies have every right to be at Pride showing their support for the people that they love who happen to be members of the LGBTQ plus community, but I do fully understand that not all straight cis people feel that way, um, even if they are fully in support of the LGBTQ plus community, and this particular friend um, would more than likely feel that way about it. I think they feel slightly differently if we were going with the other friend, <laughs> because then they wouldn't be the only ally going. Um, but being the only ally going with me, I think they would have found that uh, not, they would have found that uncomfortable, but for the reasons that I've stated, which is they would feel like they didn't have the right to be there because, you know, they weren't LGBTQ plus themselves. Um, and not because they don't support the community, because they do. That's, that's kind of what I'm trying to say. I hope that's coming across. Um, as I said, my, you know, my friends will lovely and wonderful um but i also you know i i understand you know, my friends have different comfort levels and different levels of feeling like you know they don't want to impose on certain things and and you know stuff like that and you know i i completely understand that as a <laughs> as an extreme introvert i don't have the confidence to go up to people and go hey i'm all on my own at pride do you mind if I hang out with you? Which would have made me feel a little bit less awkward and I potentially could have made me friends, but I do struggle with things like that. So I completely understand feeling out of your element in a situation. Um, so I, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that I'm, you know, I'm being judgmental or anything. I, you know, I'm not being judgmental or anything. I am being understanding that my friend might not have felt comfortable in that situation because they might have felt as though they didn't have a right to be there, even though they do support the community. Um, I hope that was clear. Um, I did have, uh, so, so whilst I was there, after, after I took part in March, um, I had my free whistle. So I got a free whistle, which I kept a keepsake. Um, it was fun blowing it, even though I wasn't in the right part of the march for people making lots of noise. <laughs> um, I sort of like made it up onto the Pink Pie, which was where like the, the main part of the event was sort of taking place. Um, and I did have a, I want to say, early teenager, young teenager, um, approach me and compliment me on my flag. So I had my flag is kick because I had my flag is kick. <laughs> so I wasn't gonna not do that. Um, and they, you know, we had a brief conversation where they were like, "I'm really surprised at how many non-binary people are at this event." I didn't think, you know, there would be quite as much uh, non-binary representation here. And I was like, "Yeah, no, I felt exactly the same. I've seen a lot of like non-binary flags and, and uh, gender fluid flags and demi boy and demi girl flags." Um, and and I think I even saw a bi gender flag as well. Um, I don't, I don't remember, but I'm fairly sure I saw one as well. I mean, I had one like on my 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 badge on my bag because <laughs> uh, I've got a, a bi bi gender flag badge on my bag, so I did have one with me. So um, I I faced that and I saw an actual flag on somebody else on there, but I don't I don't remember because there's like so many different flags. Like I recognise a lot of them, but I didn't recognise all of them. Um, the kid in question who, who came up to me, I'm fairly certain they were using a demi-boy flag. 
But again, I don't want to say for absolute certain that they were. They could have. It, it could have been um, the the gay men flag. Um, but I, I, I said I'm not very good with my flags, so I'm not one hundred percent certain which of the two it was. But I'm very certain it was one of the two. Um, however, because he was. He, sorry, they, I'm, I'm, I want to use gender neutral pronouns for this particular kid because I can't be certain, um, because they were talking about how many non-binary people there were there and um, their whole conversation with me was to do with the, the non-binary presence. I'm going to say it was the Debbie Boy flag. Um, and that they were making those comments because they themselves are within the non-binary umbrella, uh, and they, yeah, um, but, uh, as I said, if I am wrong, and it was the other flag, um, then I apologise, I'm not very good with my flags, I'm doing this from memory, but I'm fairly certain maybe that that's the one that it was. <laughs> um, but as I said, I'm not very, I'm not as good with my flags as I would like to be, um, I'm better than some people, but I'm not as good with them as, as, I would, as I would necessarily like to be. There are some that I definitely recognise, and some that I'm like, that's, that could be this one, or it could be this one. Um, I'm not saying the flags necessarily look really similar, um, but sometimes, especially like when they're sort of like in cape mode, and you're not necessarily seeing them properly, it can be easy to sort of model them up a little bit. Um, but yeah, uh, so so that was one of the the things that sort of happened to me whilst I was there. Um, as, as I mentioned, I did bump into a couple of people that I work with. Um, they're both fairly new, um, so I don't know them particularly well. But we did have like a little bit of a conversation, um, and one of them was, was did actually say, "Oh, I was wondering if I would see you here." And I'm like, "Yeah, my best present." I wish I had people with me. <laughs> I, I, I didn't quite, I don't know, I might have actually said that. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was good. I mean, I, I said I didn't stay that long, partly because I was on my own and, and I didn't bump into anybody else that I knew that I could have hung out with properly for a little bit. Partly because the weather was a little bit on the miserable side and I was starting to feel a bit cold and wet and damp. Um, and also, uh, this is one of the reasons that I hadn't sort of fully mentioned to anybody, but um, I kind of mentioned it on the channel last week where I have to be a bit careful of how long I'm wearing a binder for. Um, and because it was the first time that I was properly wearing my medium binder and it was starting not necessarily to feel really uncomfortable, but it was sort of getting to the point where I sort of like I probably want to give myself a little bit of a break from this now um just because i'm still breaking in i'm still getting used to it it is quite a bit tighter than my larges are at this point um so that was like so the, the trio of reasons i sort of went home when i did was i was just wandering around aimlessly on my own um and i was feeling very lonely the weather wasn't great and i wanted to sort of go home and dry off i wanted to eat as well but we haven't had actually had lunch at that point um, either and I didn't really want to buy lunch whilst I was there because it was a lot of like sweet food so there was like uh, there was like sweet stores set up and then then it was sort of like burger van food uh, which doesn't really agree with me very well um, so I, I wasn't planning to eat whilst I was there so I, I did sort of like want to go and get some food and I think if I bumped into somebody I might have like gone to a nip the shop and bought some food there and then, and then come back um, but yeah, I, I, I wanted to eat and I wanted to get out of the rain. <laughs> and then uh, the, the third sort of reason, which I hadn't really acknowledged on the day, but will acknowledge now, was the first day wearing this wonderful new binder. And I just wanted to sort of like at least take it off for a little while in order to give my ribs a chance to rest because that is you know, something that you kind of need to do anyway definitely while I'm still breaking a binder in and definitely in my situation where I do have a pre-existing rib condition that I do have to be very careful with. Um, so those were my reasons for not sort of saying on when I actually did. Um, 
I did have a friend uh, message me sort of later on and try to encourage me to go back, but by this time I was sort of like, oh, it's almost dinner time, and I wanted to have a bath because I was feeling a bit cold, um, cold and miserable. I had work the following day, so I didn't really want to be out that late. Um, um, I was also watching old episodes of Taskmaster and. Um, I basically left it as I, you know, let me have dinner, let me see how I feel after dinner, um, and I'll think about it. Um, and then I had dinner, and I was like, I just, I just want to stay here and have my my nice hot bath, which I did have, uh, <laughs> because I just, I was, I, I was just feeling cold, and you know, it, it also started raining again, like right as I was eating dinner as well. And I was just like, no, I don't want to go back out. <laughs> I know I don't live that far away. I don't want to get back out. No, I'm like no. Um, so I do apologise to that friend. I didn't. I didn't make it back. But that was just kind of the the mood I was in that particular evening. As I said, I just wanted to have a nice hot bath and warm myself back up because I was still still kind of shivering a little bit, and I I did feel a little bit run down for the following couple of days. Um, unfortunately, the cold does do that to me. <laughs> Cold, wet, miserable summer weather does do that to me. Um, but yeah, I, it was it was a, it was a good day. Um, I was there. It would have been nice if I shared the experience with somebody because that might have encouraged me to enjoy a little bit more of the day. Um, but as it was, I had a, a, a really good first pride experience. Um, and I know uh, that there are various other price events going on in the UK over the next few weeks. Um, so if you're watching this and you have been to one or you are going to one, I hope you have a, have a great experience or have had a great experience. Um, if it's your first one, uh, you know, good, good for you. If it's your 20 millionth one, Good for you. Um, I don't think it matters how many that you that you've been to. It doesn't matter if you're going as a member of the LGBTQ plus community or as an ally of somebody. Um, I think you know going on and supporting these events is really important because as much as um, rights have progressed and moved forward, and as as much as we are moving towards uh, a more equal society, we are still not there yet. So it is still very important that we have things like Pride to push um, for equal rights for everybody, um, to make sure that all voices are heard and all voices are recognised. And again, I'm going to stress the importance of remembering that minority communities within minority communities also need us to, to speak out and, and let their voices be heard and recognise that they do exist as well um, because equality is not equality until everybody has the same rights as everybody else. Um, yeah, <laughs> this, this is very preachy in places. I, I apologise, but like I said before, it is something I do genuinely believe in. Um, and, and not just in terms of the LGBTQ plus um, community, although that is the one that is obviously the closest to my heart. Um, I, I also you know, think more needs to be done um, for equality for uh, disabled rights, um, for neurodivergent um, individuals, um, for uh, you know, people of colour and, and the black community, more needs to be done in order to ensure that everybody gets equal rights and equality really means equality, that you know we, we are moving towards a more progressive world but we are not there yet and it is very very important that you know anybody who has the voice and has the power to speak out and you know, acknowledge that you know, think the world is not perfect and there's still a lot of flaws going on and there's still a lot of work that we need to do to get equality. We need to be speaking out and saying those things. We, you know, we, we have made a lot of progress, but we are not there yet. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hopefully this one will save this time. 
I really don't want to have to record it for a third time. I'm dreading pushing the stop button in a minute and it like crashing again. Um, so I hope you found this one sort of interesting. I hope um, you're all looking forward to seeing whatever it is I'm going to be talking about next time. And I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs> If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!